In this video, I'll show you how you can read a CSV file in C Sharp and import its data into a .NET list using the brilliant CSV helper library. Once the data is in your application, then you can treat it like any other list. You can slice it, dice it, order it, save it to a database, do whatever you like. Now, if you'd like to know how to create a CSV file and export data in it, Check out our other video on creating CSV files with CSV Helper, which I'll link somewhere up above and in the description below. Now you may be wondering, why would you use a library like CSV Helper when you could just roll your own code to do the job? Well, when you're handling structured data like CSVs, even though .NET has some really good text and file handling features built in, you're still responsible for handling different delimiters, deserializing data into useful .NET data types, and gracefully handling exceptions when they inevitably happen. Now CSV Helper just does all this for you and in just a few lines of code and I'll show you how. Before we get started, if you're new here and you like this kind of content, please do consider subscribing and tapping the notification icon so you know when we upload future videos. And with that, let's dive into the code. So here is the CSV file I'd like to bring into my project. It's just a list of rocket launches uh, with a flight number, the name of the mission, the date it was launched, whether or not the rocket landed or was recovered, and whether the mission was successful. I now want to turn this CSV data into a list that I can access in my code. So let's do that. So I've created a blank .NET Core console app and installed the CSV helper package using .NET add package CSV helper. If you're using Visual Studio, you can use the package manager console command install dash package CSV helper. So to use CSV helper, we just need to add a few using declarations. First, we'll add using CSV helper then we'll add system.io for file access. We'll add the system.globalization namespace. And for this example, we'll also add system.link as we'll need to call to list on our I enumerable. We're going to use the CSV reader class that comes with CSV helper to import our data. And CSV reader takes a .NET stream reader as a constructor parameter. So let's create one that points to our rocket launches file. So first we'll open up a using block and then we'll add var stream reader equals new stream reader and we'll paste in the path to our CSV file. Now we have a stream reader, we can initialize a CSV reader class. So let's open up another using block and we'll add var CSV reader equals new CSV reader and the first argument is our stream reader. The second is a culture info object. This just tells CSV helper how to handle things like currencies and number formatting. So we'll just get a culture info dot invariant culture. And that was why we needed our system.globalization namespace. So we can now read our CSV file straight into a collection of dynamic objects using the method get records on CSV reader. So we'll do that using var records equals CSV reader dot get records and we'll pass in the dynamic type parameter there and just close that out. Now just a side note here, the return type from get records is an I enumerable, which doesn't fully get populated until it is enumerated. So in our case we want to be able to see the data in the debugger. So we'll call to list on get records, which was why we included the system.link namespace. And now that's pretty much it. If we pop a breakpoint in here and then run our code using run and then start debugging, we'll see what happens. So we've hit our breakpoint, get records as return, and we've got a collection of dynamic objects here that we can inspect. Let's open one up and have a look at dynamic view. We've got all our information, but it's not quite ideal. For one thing, we'd need to use string column header names to access our data. This is not very type safe. Notice all of our values are strings. When ideally we'd like, for example, our launch date to be a date time, we'd like our booster recovered and success flags to be booleans, and we'd like our flight number really to be an integer. And CSV helper allows us to deserialize straight into a C sharp class with strongly typed properties. So let's do that. So let's first create a class to hold information about each launch. And we need to create properties for the flight number, which is an integer the name of the mission, which is a string, the launch date, which will be a date time, and we'll need flags to tell us whether the mission succeeded and if the rocket landed, and these will both be Boolean fields. 
Now before I run the import again, notice that the headers in the CSV file are snake cased, but my C sharp properties are camel cased. So we need to tell CSV reader how to map the header names in the CSV file to the properties on the class. And there's two ways that we can do this. And the first is using property attributes. So to do that, we'll need to add another couple of namespaces to our file. So let's add using CSV helper dot configuration and using CSV helper configuration dot attributes. So now we can decorate our C sharp properties with the name attribute. And this will tell CSV helper what column header name to use when reading objects of the rocket launch type from CSV. So to our first property, let's add the name attribute. And we'll just pass into here the name of the column header in the CSV, which is flight number. And now we can map the rest of our properties just the same. All we need to do now is replace the dynamic type argument on our get records call with the name of our class, which in this case is rocket launch. And that's it. Now we can run our code again and see what happens. So we've hit our breakpoint. Let's have a look at our records collection. So we can see that CRS3 has an integer, flight number 14. We have a true flag for did land and we have a true flag for succeeded. And notice we also passed the date time out to 18th of April 2014 successfully. So our property attributes worked perfectly. Now there are times, however, when you may not have access to the class that you're deserializing into. It may be sealed or you may just prefer not to use property attributes. In this case, we have another tool in the CSV helper toolbox called class maps that allow us to specify advanced rules around how CSV helper reads and writes columns to and from a CSV file. A class map is a special kind of class that acts as an intermediary of sorts between our CSV file and the target class, in this case, rocket launch. So first, let's remove our attributes that we added to our rocket launch class. And now let's create a new class called rocket launch class map. Now I can base that class on class map and pass in the rocket launch type parameter. So our base class gives us a fluent API that we can call to specify rules for each column in our CSV. Inside our constructor, we can call the map function on class map and pass in an expression that specifies which property we're interested in. In this case, we want to map the name of the flight underscore number column to the flight number property on our class. So let's add in map and pass in the expression m, m dot flight number. And we just want to map the name, so let's call dot name it's an extension method on map and we just pass in our column name flight underscore number and now let's go ahead and map the rest of our columns so all we need to do now is tell the csv reader class to use the rocket launch class map when reading objects of type rocket launch and to do this we just add one new line before our get records call and that will be CSV reader dot context dot register class map. We'll pass in the rocket launch class map as a type parameter. And that's it. We can run our code again. So we've hit our breakpoint again. We have our records collection. Let's open one up and take a look. And we can see that this has worked exactly the same as our property attributes. So this has demonstrated how to bring CSV data into your C Sharp application using three methods, dynamics, property attributes, and class maps. There's loads more things you can do with CSV Helper though, and I've put a link in the description below to the homepage and documentation for the library so you can check it out further. The code in this example is also up on GitHub, and I've linked that down below too. If you want to play with some fun sample data, there's a link in the description to the unofficial but open source SpaceX REST API on GitHub. Go check it out. It's a lot of fun. We really enjoyed using it to make this video. If this has been helpful to you, please do like the video and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.